I thought, why not actually take a bit of pride in our work? We're going to be covering the use of stencils and some cool highlighting techniques as well. How to airbrush clouds. Really gently though, of course. And there's the finished result. Great! So thanks for watching, I hope you picked up something new and we'll see you next time. Just bloody kidding with you mate. Why don't we take a look at how this result actually came about. The material that I'm working on is known as foam core board. It's basically two pieces of cardboard stuck to each side of a thin piece of foam. It's cheap, lightweight and very absorbent. And when you've finished masking up the border of your artwork, Time to cut some stencils. So what are we up to now? We're going to need to prepare some stencils before we put on our baby blue colour. So let's do that. The easiest way to do this is to check out the size of your artwork, get a piece of paper that you're going to use as a stencil, and just lightly trace out the shape of your cloud. Oh great! Now tear that little sucker up! Couple of bits of tape, just gonna fold those around on themselves. Oh, great. So we've got our stencil a little torn up. We're just going to put a little bit of tape on the back of that and we're gonna whack it on our artwork there. Really gently though, of course. Oh, excellent. Let's go ahead and tear out another couple and put them underneath. Oh, great. So you've got your little faux clouds in place. That's fantastic. Time to get that baby blue loaded up once again into your little airbrush gun. We're just going to put a base tone over this whole artwork, exactly like we did in the first tutorial. And we're just going to add a darker blue blend coming from the top because our highlights are all going to be mainly at the top of these clouds. Perfect, so you've taken your stencil off. Now the one thing we're going to do before applying any grey is look at any areas that are perhaps a little bit too sharp, typically the bottom of the clouds. And we're going to go in and add a little bit of that same blue colour we've just added over the top of everything and just soften those areas a little bit. So what are we up to now? After laying down that little extra bit of baby blue in the clouds, just give them a touch more dimension to soften some of the edges that were a bit too sharp. We're going to do exactly the same thing with the white. And you're going to go over these same areas that you went over in blue, only if they need to be softened with a little bit of white. I'm hoping that it's pretty obvious what we're doing at this stage. Like I said, we just put the white into the airbrush, we're just going around the edge, and we're basically sharpening up any areas that need sharpening, and softening up other areas that need softening. Along with that, we're adding a few little textures, and sort of those parts of the cloud where it's torn off a little bit, and you still see a few streaks sort of connecting between the two clouds. We've got some cloudy looking clouds. That's a good start, isn't it? Next step is to put a little bit of a super light grey into the airbrush. Now, like I said, <clears throat> we'll be using a super light grey, which is about a third of a cup of the airbrush filled with white and one drop of black. So it's going to be the lightest of light greys you've ever seen in your life. However, you want to start with something that you have a lot of control over. Excellent, we've got the grey ready in our, in our airbrush. And I just want to mention before we start that if you're following along, please take extra care with how you apply this because if you go too heavy with this colour and it's very easy to do soon, you're going to get storm clouds. Remember, just the weakest grey that you can possibly mix that's not white and a little bit of blue.
Oh, excellent. I just thought I'd quickly mention the obvious things. The further away the clouds get, the less of the underside of the cloud that you're going to see. So the clouds further away are only going to have sort of smaller lines as, their, as the shadow on their cloud. So you'll see more of the top of the cloud, less of the bottom. That means a small grey line on the bottom. That's it. The second thing I want to add is that all throughout doing these clouds here, I've been adding the most subtle of subtle textures with the grey. So it just gives it a tiny bit of dimension. You don't want to go too fine with these textures because it can ruin the fluffiness of the clouds. Unless that's the look you're going for. If you're going for harsh clouds, do finer textures. That's great. I'm all for it. All clouds, fluffy or sharp, are equal in my opinion. Okay, now for my silly voice, let's keep going.